Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm going to be looking at something that I haven't looked at in quite a long time and that is a crane. <laughs> By chance, over the years, I've covered quite a few of Backman's Maintenance of the Way or Mole models. I looked at that high rail bus thing, which was a lot of fun, and I also looked at that highly impressive blacksmith car. So the theme seems to be that these Maintenance of the Way models are a lot of fun. So I've decided I'm going to start looking at a few more of them. So today's model is this. It is the Backman Operating Steam Crane. And that just sounds awesome, doesn't it? So I'm pretty sure this is going to be as much fun, at least, as the other maintenance of the way models I've looked at. Now, of course, I have looked at a steam crane in the past, quite a long time ago. It was the Hornby one, and Hornby still produced that model. And actually, theirs is incredibly inexpensive. Even at the RRP, it's £37.49. And as that price suggests, that model is pretty much a toy. It's a bit of fun, and you know, you could put it on your serious model railway, but I think for the most part, those models are used as toys. This, while still reasonably priced, I think, is a little bit more expensive. The RRP for this model was £61.50, so, you know, not that far away from double the price of Hornby's. This model, though, I bought, I think it came from TMC, the model center, for £29.63, so much more reasonable. Still, though, a big difference in the RRP. Does that mean that this model is not a toy, whereas the Hornby one is more toy grade? I don't know. We're going to have to find out. Let's see what it's like, the Backman Steam Crane. So the first point of interest is actually nothing to do with the model at all. It is these, my new slippers. Unfortunately, when I bought these, I didn't realize that I was actually buying a large pair of pork pies to shove my feet into, but they're comfortable, so I'm gonna keep them. I just apologize to you lot who have got to look at them now for the next year or so until I wear them out. Anyway, back onto the crane. Let me show you the end of the box then. So this is what I've got. It is item number 16138. It is a 250 ton crane, cars, doesn't make sense, and boom tender maintenance of the way. So that's basically all we've got. Here's something you might like though, if I show you the end of the box, it says here that this product meets or exceeds all US federal safety standards. Hooray! It then goes on to say that this product can expose you to chemicals including lead which is known to the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Whew, absolutely tremendous. And then it says, contains lead, may be harmful if eaten or chewed, may generate dust containing lead, keep out of the reach of children. <clears throat> so, in other words, as well as this being a HO scale steam crane for your model railway, it's also literal poison. And on that bombshell, let's get on with the unboxing, shall we? So, Let's open up the end of the box and let's unleash the lead dust, shall we? You know what? I think I'll have to uh, take my chances with the lead dust. Can I just say though, why? Why have you put lead into this thing, Backman? There is no reason that any product today should have lead in it. You can make paint without lead, you can use lead-free solder, you can make metal weights that don't have lead in them. Why has this got to have lead? You know that these products are attractive to children. It's no good saying keep out of reach of children in tiny text on the box. Children are gonna get this in the end. Just don't put lead in it. I realize that the amount of lead is probably very small, but it doesn't matter how small the amount is, it shouldn't have lead at all. Confusing. Anyway, there are some instructions here. So 250 ton crane car and 51 foot floodlight car. Interesting. It said boom tender or tender on the end of the box. So they're using different terms. Anyway, the detachable operating knob is used for raising and lowering both the crane and the hook. There is a knob holder. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm too immature for this, aren't I? <laughs> In two of the side windows, in each side of the cab. Okay, yes, I've seen those. Attach the knob. <laughs> How many times can we say the word knob on a single sheet of A5 paper? This is the answer. 
through the forward window and turn it to raise and lower the hook, attach the knob through the second window and turn it to raise or lower the crane. Right, 51 foot floodlight car, which is not what we've got, there is no floodlight here. Um, for best operating results we recommend you check the two brass contacts, alright, whatever. This is irrelevant because we don't have a floodlight car, so uh, why? Why is that on the crane instructions? I don't know. So, uh, first thing, oh, here's the knob. Is this the knob? The knob. All right, the knob. They said it a million times, I'm gonna say it a million times. So this is the knob. You stick this knob into a hole in the side of the crane and uh, you use it to operate your jib. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those reviews, I think. Okay, right, yes, <laughs> composure. Let's pull this thing out. See whether it's any good or not. Here is the crane. All right, so the base of it rotates, not very freely. Uh, there's a hatch here, which I suppose moves up and down to allow the crane itself to move up and down. Very, very tall steam chimney here, which I expect is going to clang against my bookcase and passenger footbridge. Uh, so we'll see how we get on with that. Uh, it does have metal wheels, which is great. Quite a lot of them as well. I mean, this is not that expensive. And on this car alone, we've got six axles. So that's quite something. And then I guess if I can do this, you insert the knob onto one of these pegs and uh, twist them, twist the knob and nothing. Oh yeah, yeah, we've got the, the hook descending. All right. Uh, Let's insert the knob into the other hole. <laughs> um, and this raises the crane, yeah, okay. And we'll do this again on a flat surface uh, where this will probably be more successful. But anyway, yeah, it all seems to work. Let's have a look at the, the floodlight car, which is clearly not, it's clearly a tender. So let's have a look at this. I mean, these are large vehicles for like 30 pounds I paid. Works out at 15 pounds each. This isn't bad, is it? I mean, this thing is clearly not that detailed. And instead of a floodlight, it's got some wood. <laughs> They've made it easy, haven't they, for all the innuendos to come out today. Um, but yeah, okay, so it's clearly just a floodlight car with some wood instead of a floodlight. Subtle, guys, very subtle. And then there's this little sort of cab at the back. Uh, which I don't think has an interior or anything. Yeah, it's a very basic, relatively light model, but uh, hopefully it will do the job. So I'm going to assemble these, we'll put these together on my white backdrop. We'll take a look at some of the details and then I'll twiddle the knob a bit more for you and hopefully you'll all enjoy seeing that. I'm sure you will. Okay, let's get started. So there it is, up close and personal for you then, the poisonous Backman knob crane, which they hilariously claim is a finely detailed hobby product and not intended for children. Even though I suspect that it very much is intended for children, they just say it isn't so that they can still legally sell it even though it's full of poison. And I say this because it very much isn't a highly detailed model, and it's got these interactive action features which very much appeal to children. But still, it's, a, it's an adult collector's model. Yes, it certainly is. But aside from uh, the slightly dubious morals behind all of that, it is quite an impressive thing for what I paid. Less than £30 and I got all of this. It is not a highly detailed model by any stretch, but it's still quite a fancy bit of engineering. It's still a lot of fun and I think it looks pretty good, particularly for what I paid. So there's over 200 grams of model here, something like 210 grams between the two, so fairly heavy. There are a few metal parts on it as well, even though the bulk of the models are just plastic. The actual hook that descends, that is metal, obviously, so that it's heavy enough to actually go down when you unwind it. And of course, you've got all of the metal wheels as well. And there's six, I think there's 10 sets of these. Normally those axles cost about a pound each and that's a good price. So you've got 10 quid of that 30 straight away just on the wheels. So the value for money, at least for what I paid, is absolutely fine. Let's take a look at some of the details then. So these ladders are just molded effects that have been painted. Same is true of the handrails on the doors. Having said that, there is a fair amount of molded detail, including all the rivets on the main crane chassis. Quite a bit of detail on that. You've got the separately fitted roof, which also has lots of rivets. And I will just lift that up so that you can see a bit of the crane mechanism. It's quite basic under there, really just two reels with uh, the cotton stuff wound around them. 
and uh, they obviously operate the crane when you turn them, so that's fairly simple. A little bit of painted detail on the back, it's not wasp stripe, it's the sort of like pallid ill wasp stripe, if you will, uh, but it looks good, it's well decorated. And then you've got the crane beam itself, which is again quite nicely detailed, fair amount of riveting, not particularly nicely moulded, yeah these tools are showing their age, again not a finely detailed model, they are just stretching the truth when they say that. But I have to say the pulley systems and everything are really quite remarkable, aren't they? Quite a bit of engineering got into them, quite complex and they certainly look very impressive as the thing operates. I'll do that for you in just a second. Let's have a look at the tender or the, what was it, the floodlight car or something? And they've craftily replaced the floodlight for this pile of blackened wood. <sighs> Anyway, besides that, yeah, this is a very basic vehicle. It's having a bit of a scale crisis because if you look at the size of the door on the front, it seems like uh, the right size door. The windows on the side, though, they sort of start near the top of the door, so your eyes would literally be about level with the bottom windowsill. Don't know, it doesn't look very scaled, does it? But I guess maybe that's intentional. You've got, again, very large... In fact, the side of the wagon looks much larger scale than the ends because the, uh, the entrance walkway here, again, is very wide, and it seems to be in scale with the windows. So again, I mean, this is not a highly detailed, accurate model, as far as I can tell. Incidentally, if you want one of those, Backman do a very detailed crane, which costs many hundreds of pounds. So this is definitely filling a very different gap in the market to that model. Anyway, around the back, you've got a little bit more molded detail, a few separately fitted parts on the top, little chimney sort of thing, little turning wheel. Yeah, all looks absolutely fine, but I'm now going to reinsert the knob into the crane and we will see how this operates on a flat surface. So I'm going to start by raising the main crane itself, shove the knob into the little hole and wind it up. I always get the direction wrong. There we go. Raise the crane. Uh, don't forget you can also sort of turn the crane like that. It's not that heavy though, so I mean, if you put much weight on this, it's going to start to tip, so you're not going to be able to lift locomotives, but maybe the old wagon you could lift or something like that. Now we're, we're going to lower the hook. There we go. Nice, very cool. And then back up again. It really is the motion of the pulleys on the main crane, which is quite impressive. I mean, the way the roof sort of opens and all the pulleys turn and everything, it's just uh, a nice bit of kinetic art almost yeah it's quite nice worth it definitely worth the money but not a serious model okay so i mean everything seems to work mechanically the crane seems to work fine but with these things i mean they're quite complicated things to run on a layout you've got the crane touching the boom car here you've got the height of it is it actually going to work as it should on a layout that's something that the hornby crane certainly struggle with let's see how this one handles it all right, so here is my test setup for this admittedly very cool crane. I've picked out a loco, it's a bit of a crowd pleaser this one, the Camelback of course, and also to run alongside the crane I've got my all-time favourite maintenance of the Way Wagon, that is the blacksmith car, and then of course we've got the crane in the middle. Seems to be sort of reasonably free rolling I suppose, given how many axles it's got. Uh, but I don't think you'll be very surprised when I show you the Gordons Hill rolling test. So I guess I will go ahead and show you that right now. Okay, we're off. <laughs> Can you see the problem? Large steam chimney colliding with footbridge. Now, the Hornby steam crane allows you to remove that chimney to eliminate that problem. This chimney is a part of the moulding, unfortunately. So you, you can't really get away from that, can you? It's going to happen again. It's not going to be a high speed crash. <laughs> there we go. The most gentle crash that's ever happened on this railway. OK, let's try it again, but this time without the bridge. Oh, this is awkward. Hopefully that tree won't fall. No, not yet. Got to start at the top again. Right. Try again. Come on. Right. It's off. Oh. 
didn't really get much further, did it? Let's try a bit higher up. I can't remember if I was actually up high there. Let's try again. Give it a little nudge this time. All right, that's a bit faster. Okay, so yeah, there's a lot of axles, quite a lot of drag. Uh, it's not gonna be that easy to pull it. So effectively, this is not that free rolling. I mean, it's gonna produce quite a bit of drag, but I think that's pretty much to be expected. It's not as though you're gonna be putting a train of 30 of these together or something. And if it's a maintenance of the way train, it's not going to be massively long. So I don't think the drag is a massive issue on this particular wagon. One thing that does concern me a little bit is how stiff the rotation of the crane is. Because obviously as this whole unit enters a curve, it's quite important that these are able to move left and right. And as you can see, when I try to, or I lift it up a little, and I pull it to the side, it's almost sort of tipping the crane there we go, <laughs> the crane chassis off the track. So I don't know how it's going to handle the curves. And when I was doing the Gordon's Hill test, even that sort of shallow curve at the top of the hill was causing issues with this bit. So I I'm guessing maybe the rotation of the crane is supposed to be looser than it is. Um, obviously, if it does cause derailments, the solution will have to be to raise the crane up like this so that it can turn more freely uh, without interfering with the boom wagon or whatever it was called. Uh, so I don't know, I'm just speculating at this point. So let's quit speculating and let's get coupled up and see exactly what does happen. So it's got KD couplers or mock KD couplers, I think Batman call them easy mate couplers. Um, yeah, it's knuckle couplers basically. And they seem to function. Yeah, as you can see, that was a fairly successful coupling coupling. I don't know what a coupling is. Uh, so yeah, I'm not really looking forward to this because uh, cranes historically quite unreliable uh, in my opinion. Let's see if this one's any better. Not too fast. Right. That's fourth radius right there, I believe. This is the second. Oh, not good. So the, the crane is sort of disengaged which means if it curves the other way, which I don't think it does on this layout, it's gonna be a problem. And indeed, it never got a chance to be a problem because I suspect it is that chimney uh, that has just clocked the bookcase. <laughs> so, not very respectful of the loading gauge. Shall I stage that again just so you can see it? I think so. All right, so we've got a chance here to repeat the test on these curves. Ooh. Seemed a bit better that time. All right, let's get in position for the great crash. I guess we'll be able to see for sure whether it is the chimney that does it. Oh, <laughs> it survived. Now, somehow it seemed to limbo underneath the bookcase, but sure enough, on the other side, it is missing. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Right, so I very cunningly propped up the side of the bookcase uh, with some boxes and that, so that we can see how this thing performs when it's not crashing into things. Gotta say though, it's a bit of a design oversight, isn't it? I mean, my layout is double O gauge, so my foot bridges and my tunnels and things, those are larger scale than they would be on an HO layout uh, for which this crane is designed. So if you've got permanent tunnels or foot bridges that are glued down or whatever, this is just gonna smash into them and there's no way to remove the chimney. Right, so it's demolished a station and knocked over a phone box. And yeah, the reason is the rotation here is so stiff, it doesn't return back to the center easily enough. And so each time it goes around certain curves, it just goes further and further out until now it's just killed everybody on the station. So it doesn't work properly on many levels and that is a great shame. So now I guess I'll have to try it with the, with the crane raised slightly and hopefully the same problem won't occur, but it's not a realistic way of running it, is it? Okay, crane raised very slightly. And now as you can see, it's able to move freely around the boom tender without actually having to use the rotation of the main crane body. So that's the way I'm going to have to run this. Um, your mileage may vary if you've got wider curves or if other cranes aren't as stiff as mine, uh, then obviously that might not be an issue. 
but certainly if you've got any sort of scale tunnels or footbridges or anything, uh, then this is not for you because it's just going to crash into them. So quite disappointing on performance, it's quite a fancy thing to look at, but ultimately it's not very practical, which is basically the same conclusion <laughs> I've reached with previous cranes as well. So for a low price, it's absolutely fine. Obviously don't pay a lot of money for one of these though, because, uh, well, they ultimately don't work properly, or at least this one doesn't. So with limited expectation of success, let's try the reverse points test. Oh, this is not gonna go well. We'll do it twice. We'll do it first with the crane raised slightly as I've been running it. And then just for the bowls, we'll lower the crane and do it as intended and watch it derail almost inevitably. Okay, without the crane lowered. Hmm, reasonably impressive. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Notice how much the crane swings left and right during the whole process though. <laughs> Oh dear, this is going to be interesting. Right, where's that knob? Just pull the knob out of my pocket where I store it for safekeeping. And let's lower the cranes. Is the right one yet? Okay, you can also store your knob in this window as well, I've noticed. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, uh, but it saves you losing it, I guess, if you were to misplace the knob and you gave Backman a call to ask them for a replacement knob, they'd probably get the wrong idea. Anyway, Enough of the silliness, let's go. Oh, to be fair, let's make sure the crane is perfectly straight to begin with. And we'll see if it's still straight after a quick ride with its knob. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> I don't think it's actually come off the track. It looked incredibly unstable and it's still got to come forwards, but uh, I don't think it came off. Oh, <laughs> right, so, uh, Yes, no longer straight. That's what it does. <laughs> and it shouldn't do that. Obviously, the, the rotation should be a lot less stiff than that. Uh, so now, obviously, if it was to carry on running, if this was on a normal situation, that would either crash into scenery or perhaps joust another engine off the track as it goes along, <laughs> which would be entertaining. Um, and I don't really want to do that because, you know, I like my engines and things. So uh, all in all, it's a bit of a flop, isn't it? Never mind. Right, let's wrap this up then. Let's have some ratings for this ultimate disappointment of a Backman crane. Level of detail, I've given it two star. I mean, it's an awesome crane mechanism. The way the crane itself works is absolutely amazing and there is quite a bit of detail in all the pulleys and uh, the crane and everything. But apart from that, coarse detail, very few separately fitted parts, bad molding in places not that complex of a model. It's about a two star in my opinion. Performance, pretty much two star again. Constant derailments because of the stiffness of the crane. It's going to crash into your scenery and indeed into other trains, so can't really praise that too much. On the plus side, it doesn't derail when the crane is raised, but this is unrealistic. And get this, I've also noticed that as it runs along, the crane lowers back down again because it's sprung and it just slowly unwinds. So you can leave this thing running for a bit. Eventually though, it's going to lower and derail again. So two star on performance, just not well thought through in my opinion. Quality then, I've given it three star. Uh, it's not too bad a quality actually. The build quality is all right, but it is quite plasticky, molding issues, and a few issues in the design. Again, that chimney not being removable, unforgivable. The way that the crane doesn't rotate properly, unforgivable. So it has to lose at least two stars for that. I think if anything, that's generous. Value for money though is a little bit stronger. I think with an ROP of 61 pounds 50, that's not too bad really for what you get. It is a big piece of kit. Um, what I paid 29 pounds 63, it's absolutely fine. I mean, it's largely rubbish of course, but at least it doesn't cost a fortune as well. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, 5.70 out of 10, yeah, pretty mediocre score unfortunately. And into the logbook it goes. Ninth place out of 10 above the Hornby Rocket flatbeds travesties and below the Rapido gunpowder vans. Yeah, it's a cool novelty, but uh, not one that you can actually use practically. All right, so let's sum this up then. On the plus side, it was cheap and it's pretty cool. That's it. On the downside, it's unrealistic. It's got scale issues. It's not very detailed and it will crash into things. A, because of the height of its chimney and B, because of the stiffness of its crane. 
It's also loaded with innuendo and also undisclosed amounts of poisonous materials. So would I recommend this to you? Of course I flipping wouldn't! Thanks for watching.